you know, when you look at a chronic patient, the person who's gone through the healthcare system and they're getting all these different diagnoses and no one can really figure out what's going on and one from practitioner to the next to the next, the key thing is they don't have the ability to recover, mm-hmm. whatever it is. Then the question is, why do they not have the ability to recover? And then you can go to different pathways. But one of the key things is ultimately what's causing the mitochondria to not function to not work. And then, it, you know, it can be a whole list of things. And that's where it could be a little confusing. Where things go wrong is where, like people will hear about mitochondrial dysfunction and they go, oh, we need some CoQ10. Mm-hmm. If we had some CoQ10 and we had like really fancy niacin or niacinamide and, you know, nutrients like that or pycnogenol or something like everything is going to work. And it's like, no, because <laughs> in the clinical setting, when we see chronic patients, they're coming in with bags full of supplements. They're, you know, they're not, it's not a supplement deficiency issue. Uh, for some people, you know, taking various nutraceuticals can maybe give them some minor function, you know, and maybe help on the recovery pathway, but you really have to treat the underlying mechanism of what's happening. So um, usually when people can't recover, it's it's like this load of various things that are causing the mitochondrial to not function. And then the basic things we, we already know, like we know people need to have sleep. We know people have to have movement. We know people have to have nutrients and healthy diet. We know people need to have relationships. All these things actually have been shown to impact mitochondrial function, uh, whether it's biogenesis or mitophagy or, or these different pathways. Now, ultimately, like for me, I see a lot of patients that have traumatic brain injuries um, that I work with. We're trying to help them recover. Or we'll see patients that have like chronic illnesses and they can't recover. And the first question is, can they make mitochondria? And how do you get mitochondria biogenesis? So how do you make more mitochondria? Because we can change our mitochondria concentration in our you know, tissues and cells by things we do, right? So if you look at the literature, um, what they're looking at is the signaling agents for mitochondrial biogenesis. And for the most part, there really tend to be things like antioxidants, as you know, you know, things like green tea, things like resveratrol, they turn on the cellular messengers that can, can theoretically produce mitochondria, but they don't produce mitochondria. They just turn on the messenger pathways. And then what you actually need to have to produce mitochondria is activation. So you actually have to stimulate movement and you have to have hormesis and the stress to the system to, yeah. to make those things work. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's like the, it's the, the analogy that, that I often use is, is building muscle. It's like, you're, you're not going to build muscle unless you've created the demand that right. makes your body want to adapt to that demand by building more muscle. Exactly. And it's the same thing when we do like neurological rehabilitation after someone had a stroke or injury. And the question is like, what can't you do? Uh, I can't, I can't walk in a straight line. Perfect. That's your rehab. <laughs> Exactly. You touch my nose. Exactly. That's, that's what you're going to do. Because right. you your brain you've injured now has to reconnect and mitochondria is necessary. So as you keep activating those pathways, you're going to stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis. So I think one of the key things that's, that's missing in the clinical world, especially in the world of nutrition, is just focusing on dump, like a supplement dump, like a hormone dump, like clearing toxins and not really discussing activation and what things are. So like back to the scenario, if a person can't read a chapter, they can only read three pages. The typical thing is, oh, I read uh, three pages, I'm done. And it's like, no, you're going to get your gain when you read three and a half pages, and then maybe four pages. And they keep pushing that system, and that's how you actually stimulate mitochondrial biogenesis. So mitochondrial biogenesis is a key thing. Now, interesting thing also is physical activity and movement has been shown to build mitochondria through all different tissues in the body. It's not just specific for the muscles. So, I mean, they find like liver mitochondria concentrations go up when people do physical activity and exercise. So one of the key things is there has to be some kind of movement. There has to be some type of activity tolerable to what the person can handle, you know? And I remember meeting a a mentor a long time ago. He goes, listen, when someone gets sick, you got to get them to move or they'll never recover. I don't care if they throw them in a lake, you know, on a a barrel and they're just paddling away or whatever they need to do. And and I've actually used an analogy. I had some patients that have been severely ill, like, and like, just lie on your bed and just move your arms and legs for as long as you can. Yeah. And then that's it. And then recover and then try to do that several times throughout the day. And as they do that, they're building mitochondria throughout the whole system. Like a sedentary lifestyle is going to completely impact the potential for mitochondrial biogenesis, but you don't have to be super athlete. Like you just have to work to your level of whatever fitness you have and then push it a little bit more. And that that's causes right. this hormesis effect. And it's the same thing with brain. Like if a person damaged their cerebellum and they have balance issues and you know, we just have them work on their balance system for whatever level of time they can before they start to get dizzy and then they back off. 
But if that action doesn't take place, like that stimulation to turn on these protein messenger pathways, their proteomic pathways to generate the activation of mitochondrial biogenesis, where you actually turn on these production of these, people cannot recover. So this is the problem with the supplement game and, and so forth. Now, there are some people that are so severely mitochondrial compromised where you may have to take down their inflammatory load before they can move and do things, right? There's people like, I've had patients that say, I can't, if I go outside to get the mail, I'll be in bed for the rest of the day. Yeah. Like, I can't do that yet. And those are like the most severe kinds. So, you know, for them, you might, you know, we have to kind of reduce their load with other factors first and then, but then encourage them to go get the mail and get some movement. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, there has to be some degree of hormesis or suffering to, to try these mitochondrial biogenesis pathways. And I think that's one of the biggest things I see neglected in the, you know, in, in the clinical setting world is emphasis on everything besides that. 